we, we've established that we go up to the 600 gondola. Yes. So I go up. You take the steps this time? I did. What? I took the steps. What? Yeah. How did you know oh. that? No, because yeah, we remember weird. we took the steps last time. Yeah, this time I took the I right up. stairs up. Okay, all right, fair so, enough. Anyway. And, and then I got up there, and as I'm walking to the radio booth, mm -hmm. one of the arena security guys is panicking, running behind me. Basically pushed me out of the way Oh, to run towards something. And I was like, oh, is the pizza pizza late? <laughs> Does the water need to be refilled? Come on, man. So I was like, got jobs too. Yeah. No, 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 no. But like, put them down like I, I couldn't put into context what that meant. Yeah, because usually not, literally nothing goes on there. It's very There's very few people up there. Yeah, It's really just a bunch of broadcast folk. Um, and then, you know, one or two reporters. Unless the Lakers are in town in which the whole section is filled with fanboys. But exactly. in any case, usually yeah. it's just me, the fanboy. Yeah, usually you're, yeah, I've, I've seen some things in that radio booth. Like, again, um, stop saying this, man. So, so I take my seat mm -hmm. and you know, the, our radio booth where we are, we stare right at the catwalk. This is yes. where, That's right. this is where all the banners are of the great Toronto Maple Leafs players. Yeah, name, that have name two of them. Um, anyways, we got to say it's a Raptor show. Okay. So I see three firefighters on the catwalk. Mm. And this is like a round opening tip. And I still thought nothing of it. I was just there to enjoy a game. Finally, in that peaceful radio booth without you. <laughs> For the first time this year, I didn't know who the three referees' names were. Oh, uh, come on. They showed weird. you before the game. Huh? Yeah, it was a little weird. Put it on the jumbotron. So, obviously, as the game starts, started to get messages, because I'm not listening to the TV broadcast, and I looked down at the 100s behind, I believe this is where the Pacers were, were on, on their side, and they were emptying a section. Mm. in the 100s right. and then your friend josh dm'd yes. me yeah so i see a dm on my phone that says hey did you see this fire now i see the notif notification and i thought he was sending me like a photo of sneakers or something like yo did you see this fire that's coming out okay so i click right. on it and there's no context and i didn't i still don't get it because no one's told me what's going on mm -hmm. yeah. in the arena so finally a few people messaged and said that they're talking about it i think on the tv broadcast but i didn't see the speaker being on fire it's just that the game went on Precious had a great start. Yeah, he was no, hitting he a was bunch of fire. threes. The Raptors were blowing the Pacers out. And then in the second quarter, suddenly I see they started evacuating more sections mm -hmm. in the 100s. And I see more firefighters. And then at that point, I was like, all right, should I be leaving? And that's when Herbie Kuhn yeah. went on the PA system. Yeah. And told every, Herbie Kuhn with the shush of the year. Oh. But we have this clip, by the way. Oh, so, we do? I'm so yeah, happy. Yeah, so we let's, have this. let's play this let's clip it, of Herbie Kuhn letting uh, the arena people know that it was time to evacuate. The in arena mic. Here's Herbie Kuhn. Please. At this time, by order of the fire chief, we are being asked to slowly and calmly evacuate the building. There is no threat. There is no threat to public safety. I'd like to repeat. There is no threat to public safety. All right. The reason we're giving is not because of anything else related to that, because that was an awesome job of crowd control by Herbie. When you announce something like that, you have to do it really peacefully and calmly because there's so many people involved, right? You do not want... The last thing you want to do is no incite panic. any panic. No so panic. he did a phenomenal job of that. The reason we're giggling is because he does that same thing for when Raptors are on the free throw shooting line. Two. Shooting two. And he's been doing that since 1990... <laughs> Yeah, it, it's... He's been doing that since 1995, yeah. since his first year on the job. He's been practicing. No, and, and the, but that was such a that was such a great move in the moment. Oh, For yeah. him to just shush the crowd. It was yeah. great. It was perfect. And listen, we, we can joke about it a little now because, you know, everything was figured out. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, it was a... I don't think it was like a... <laughs> God, Derek. Uh, Derek's fired well, up I on this Monday. This was, I knew this was going to be a He's, wearing his, drop, he's wearing his Team Canada soccer polo. That's he's right. fired up today. Polo, it's a kit, man. Oh, oh okay, sorry. <laughs> this guy said so it's showing a polo. respect to Derek no. Brandon. I don't, I don't know clothes, yeah. As we could tell when we went to nah, Holt, you don't know Holt Renfrew. All, the same, the same when big we went to the same big V Wednesday. When we went to Holt Renfrew on Friday, more to come. Oh yeah, yeah. second segment. A lot but of yes, today. so I go down mm. in the six hundreds. I'm talking to a few of the media members there. So you go from six hundred to one hundred meters. So I walk down, and yeah. as I'm walking down, I'm like, all right, maybe I should just go home. Like this just doesn't seem like my night. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 
And then I see a bunch of fans. So fans are starting to to obviously leave the arena, but yeah. a lot of them didn't want to leave. They yeah, were just hanging out in the concourse. Saturday night, they made plans. They bought tickets. Yeah, they made plans. They, they bought tickets. And plus, the Raptors were up twenty eight at that time. Yes, you friend of the program, friend of the program, morning shows. Uh, Ailish Forfar had yep. courtside tickets. What? She was sitting right next to the Raptors bench. Are you serious? Yeah. And Wait, she, how did Ailish get? Uh, I didn't investigate that, but yeah. So Wait, you don't ask someone how they got court, how they got Drake uh, seats. All right, keep going. Yeah. Anyways, so. I see a bunch of fans just like loitering around and a lot of them just like eavesdropping. I could hear that they, they were just upset, right? They're like, oh, what's going on? Like, do I got to leave? Am I getting a refund? So I decided to check in on the real media members in the 100s. Yeah, yeah. So I go to the media row there and uh, just decided to hang out there and just to see everything unfold. Your boy, J. Lou. Yeah, my, shout out to my boy, J. Lou, Eric Kareen. We hung out there and the Raptors PR was giving us updates throughout. And you could see on the court... The firefighters were getting set up. And I think people have seen the photos of the two firefighters dangling in midair mm -hmm. to put yeah. out the fire on the speakers. And then at one point, Masai and Bobby were out there. Yeah. Everybody seemed really relaxed. Obviously, players went back to the locker room. But we were getting updates every 10, 15 minutes. And we're basically being told that the game is probably going to restart. So that's why I decided to stay. And it didn't really feel like that long of a delay. I don't know, maybe because I was there. Word. It was long at home, trust me. Yeah. What did yeah. they do on the broadcast? They were just keeping people updated, so, I guess? on the TV side, um, on the other network, I think they cut away and then they went to college basketball for a while and then they came back. Okay. Um, obviously, Matt and Jack never left the building. Right. Um, and I know Eric Smith and Paul Jones stayed on air. They stayed on, on air on the radio side for us. And it was actually really, really well done because I thought that gave me more updates on the situation as it happened. Like, literally, people would walk by and they would get... You know, like as much information out there as possible. And look, it's not easy. We joke all the time about tap dancing on air. Like you, they had to go an hour and nine minutes. There was a couple of breaks in between, but an oh, hour. Oh yeah, that, that, that was a prom date. Yeah, that was a yeah. prom dance. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't even know what you mean, but <laughs> yeah, me neither, man. I just say um, things. But in any case, yeah, like it was. I don't know. I just thought they did a great job of keeping us informed. No, it was great. And I was also available on Opal. There were, you know, our boss DT called us. And was like, oh really? He was like, hey, well, um, so you're not in the building, right? And I was like, no, I just, you know, for some reason I didn't go to the game. And then he's like, yeah, it's you know, Pacers Saturday, whatever. I was like, yeah, that's that's why. Um, and then he's like, can you can you just be on the line, available to step in? You know, maybe you would just recap, do a reaction pod mm. to the first like 20 minutes of the game. And I'm that, like, that would have been fun. I'm like, yeah, sure, yeah, I'm down for that. Sh Should have um, gotten you on the play by play. I want to hear you do play by play. Play by play of what? Of the firefighters? No, if the game came back. Oh, no. I mean, come on. I'm I'm too critical to do play by play. Think so? Then you can be a good color commentator. Then I'd be too critical for that too. <laughs> yeah, I've, sure. I've... <laughs> that's 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 what that's what players would be telling me to do. Uh, in fact, one player did tell us to do that yes uh, earlier this week. But in any case, go back to this thing. So yeah, the, the game restarts. You're all good. So who was coming over to update you and stuff? Was it? It was uh, uh, Jennifer Quinn and the Raptors okay. PR team. So they, they kept us okay. very updated. So shouts to them. But Masai and Bobby were chilling? Masai and Bobby were chilling. They were on the court just watching things unfold and then just went back to the back. And then when the game restarted, it was back to January at Scotiabank Arena. Yeah. MT Arena. MT, MT Arena, yeah, so Report, I, which I, is something you've, you love that experience. Yeah, up, like, I upgraded up, my seats. Yeah. Yeah. So you spend the rest of the game at the 100 level. And then, yeah, I mean, in terms of watching the game, like, I, I mean, it was very uncompetitive. I mean, it was great to watch. Like, it was re like with the fans in the building and with the way the Raptors were rolling, it was great to watch. And then the fans left, and like, I guess there was still a game going on, but it just felt very much like a practice. It was a scrimmage. Did it not feel like, I, I guess it yeah. felt more like a practice than other empty arena rep uh, games because, you know, the Raptors played, I think, 12 of those earlier this season. They were nine and three. Um, and we were there for a lot of those. And, um, you no, know, we're still at intensity in the building. It never really felt like, okay, this is just like some sort of, um, uh, like act or anything like that. It wasn't, didn't feel like a practice. This one, for some reason, when they came back out and they warmed up and then they're like, all right, let's go again. And then let's play for four minutes. Then let's go for a half, half of a halftime. Yeah, quarter se time. seven and a half minute halftime break. Neither team went to the locker room. They just hung out on the bench. Oh, they just chilled? Yeah, because it was basically. What, they weren't making adjustments? You're telling me um, <laughs> the, 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 the Pacers weren't like, all right, we're, what we're going to do is not let Pascal <laughs> walk to the basket every time. Because seven and a half minutes is basically like a t TV timeout. Plus, you know, give or take a couple minutes. Yes, yeah. And, and also, they just came out and warmed up. So, yeah, no, you, you're perfectly right. It felt like a scrimmage. I will say the Pacers bench were really into it in, in the second half. Yeah. Name, yeah. Name, name two players off the Pacers bench. Uh, Miles Turner. Oh, no, I mean, yeah. 
Oh, that's not fair. He no, was but, but no, but he was really into it. Yeah. Like in the in his street. But clothes. name two players who came off the bench Anyways, and played for them. This is a Raptors show. <laughs> so yeah, it was a scrimmage and the Raptors got the win and obviously uh -huh. Fred came back out in his hoodie. Yeah. Gary was chilling, sitting courtside. Like he wasn't really sitting on the bench. He was sitting on the baseline. He was hanging out with our uh, with our friend of the program, Rocky. Oh, who yeah. does a lot of great open gym nice, stuff. Man. In, in yeah, fact, yeah. Gary was just picking Rocky's brain about his camera. I could see them going back and oh, forth. Yeah? yeah, so Gary was just chilling. Wow. So yes, it was a very relaxed vibe. I, I mean, and, that's what it felt like. like. When Fred came out and was just chilling in a sweater, I'm like, all right. Yeah. They know because obviously Fred was suited up and he played the first like 17, 17 minutes. He played 17. He played yeah. well in that, in that time. You know, as as we've become accustomed to since the, the knee has been bothering him. Uh, a more chilled out role, but he was setting guys up, playing good defense, all that stuff. And when he came back on the sweater, I'm like, all right. <laughs> the Raptors know this is over. I mean, technically, if the Pacers closed the gap, I guess Fred was Pacers still were, eligible to come back. No gap, man. But you know what I mean. No, the only gaps on in that game was just the defense <laughs> by the Pacers. I mean, my goodness, they were really guarding Scotty Barnes with Buddy Heald. But this is what this is the kind of basketball you get at this time of the regular season when there's teams that are not actively trying to win. We saw this last year in Tampa. But Buddy Heald guarding Scotty Barnes? The guy's like 6'5". Who they want? And he doesn't even play defense. And they don't have help defense. Yeah. Like, did you Anyways. see the amount of times the Raptors got to the room with no help? Anyway, that's why I said it felt like a practice. But, it, it did uh, feel like a practice. Good performance, though. Guys played well. Yeah, they needed, got the win. Needed the